All right, so this is how far we got. It's kind of mocked up. I was happy with the width because it is wider than the original, which was the point of this. However, in order to utilize my deck height adjustment this time, I'm not going to be able to utilize the original wheel holes. So what I'm going to do is build some brackets on the front to move these wheel assemblies back. And I think it's going to be two and a half inches. So unfortunately I'm giving up two and a half inches of wheelbase. But it has to be done to make it so I can go bushwhacking with this when I'm done. So from here you can see how much wider it is than the original. The uh, member is a couple inches wider than it was. That's why I really couldn't reuse the old one. But the uh, advantage is I'm trying to use these, these, these bars here. You can see them. But they've got adjustment holes that are one inches on center. And I can adjust the deck height. Now I tried to keep, remember one of the issues with the last one is it was too long. So as you can see I've moved the wheels as, pretty much as far forward as I could get. But the disadvantage to that is, and I, I knew I was going to have some issues but I wanted to see if I could work around it. But there's some problems and in interference fit down here. So that mechanism you're looking at is the neutral mechanism, so you can take these motors in and out of gear. It's not really necessary, but it is handy to have, so I try to keep it. But basically, I'm not going to be able to keep these bars running to the factory locations on the deck. I'm going to have to move the wheelbase back so I can get full advantage of the adjustability I was trying to build in without those uh, troublesome brackets that I had before. So this next step, I'm going to basically build some brackets to take this whole assembly and move it back. I haven't determined how far, but I think it's going to be realistically a couple inches unfortunately. But there's really no easy workaround as far as I was going to cut I was going to cut a step in this deck back here, but as you can see the bubble right here is actually the, you know, where the tip of the blade is swiping. So it's not like I could put a shelf in there where this stuff could go, which is kind of what I was hoping. But unfortunately, it's just not going to work out. So I'm going to take these brackets again, and I'm going to make them longer going forward, which will allow me to bring the motors back. Uh, and then I should be able to pass this deck up and down right here, no problem. So I've been doing some brainstorming here. Because I'm moving this back, originally I was going to try to fit all the electronics in between these motors. And these batteries were going to be a tight fit. I mean, they, they would, but I don't really like how tight that is. So. I guess now that I'm moving them back I can I can put them forward but I do want to talk about one thing that I ended up doing that I think is going to help me this time and the last time I had my my motors mounted on the other side of this beam and I think that I really ideally want to have as much weight behind this axle as I can and instead I had it all in the front on top of the deck so this is going to help take some of the weight off the front end by keeping as much weight out back as I can. So that was the idea about keeping the electronics back here. And so I'm kind of fighting that through. Uh, there's a couple different things and I don't know. Anybody got any opinions? Share them. I don't have any other really effective tool to do this than this cutoff wheel. Um, anytime you use one of these abrasive 
wheels of death, um, you should definitely consider some fogged up eye protection. Um, you know, safety squints need not apply here. You gotta wear safety glasses because these things can grenade at any second. So I'm trying to work between the tripod here, so you guys got to bear with me. may not be the best angle, um, but when you use these, I usually I, I basically will run my line, like you can see there, uh, get it as close to where I want it, score it basically all the way through from end to end, and then I'll start focusing on cutting. So you can see we're through now, and basically it will, will pinch the tool if you're off angle at all. Um, and, and I'm short on horsepower and air here, so basically uh, anything I can do to really keep nice and parallel and go slowly from here on out will, will net me the most cutting action. So what I'm going to try to do is basically work my way this way, and then slowly I'll take that last section out over there. So that's about as far as I can get without getting into the corner of that. And I'll show you how I'm going to separate this piece after, uh, after we cut the other side as well. So basically, the further I can get this blade in, the, the closer I'm going to get to the edge without actually cutting past it. And the, but you can see it pinches the blade a lot. So basically, you know, this is as far as I'm going to get. So a few things came to mind while I was doing this. Um, one, as you can see, the uh, wheel of death is still whole. Yeah, and that's good success. And uh, two, I was able to get pretty far down in to the corners but in order to finish those corners out and get a nice clean cut that I don't have to spend much time cleaning up I've got uh, a sawzall just jam that guy down in there and cut the rest of the way I'm not going to bother showing you to you guys because it's kind of a wrestling battle but it is pretty quick so the other thing that came to mind uh, while I was doing this because I have a small air supply uh, and it's a humid day here um, the condensation in the line is pretty ridiculous, so it's important um, to go through and lube your tools. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out, that, hey, you know, I'm using this tool once in a while, and uh, when I do, make sure I oil it, because my air supply is too small, which means it generates a lot of water. Um, so, I'll uh, cut back to you here in a minute. The other thing I want to talk about is welding nuts. Um, because I didn't have a 5 16 tap, you really only want to tack weld, spot weld those nuts. If I had a tap, I would probably, you know, spend a half a second more on each tack. But these ones I had to be in and out. Uh, if you're not in and out, you'll basically shrink the threads enough that it'll cause jamming. And that's really inconvenient. I wanted to take a second to talk about these pieces. Uh, a couple of the techniques I use to build these to try to maximize my productivity, really. Um, 
stuff here is a little slower than you know at a shop where you got big giant tools and you got all the horsepower behind everything and so I have to kind of peck away at stuff um, but an example of how I hasten this up and I mean you do this in any shop probably anyway but uh, I had to drill all these holes in these two pieces so I actually tack welded them together before I started um, saves me time laying out basically I laid out on one piece and then followed that layout and got both pieces done same thing with these end caps these pieces here uh, I don't know if you can see it but there's nuts tacked in there and the original idea was I was just gonna tap this but funny enough I, I just didn't have a 5 16 tap so 5 16 was the hardware 3 8 was the hole to clearance the hardware uh, that's another thing I'd like to talk about is, you know, not hamstringing yourself with a 5 16 hole. Um, you basically fight with it if you do that. So there's a 3 8 hole with a 5 16 nut behind it. And all these holes were 3 8 as well. And all the hardware I'm using in them is their 5 16 as well. So the other thing I would like you to observe is the open corner technique here on the weld job. Instead of cutting this piece, to fit the full width of that tube, I left it shy. It gives me a nice opportunity here to put a nice bead of weld in there, um, which I'll show you later. But you also want to use your round corners. I haven't cleaned this out, but before I weld that, I'll blow all that stuff out. And as you can see, the, the metal's been ground back. It's fresh metal. Um, and I'll put a bead down through there, and that's what that round corner of that tube's used for. So this was a piece of two by two tubing cut in half and then I drilled two three-eighths holes one inch on center and then I tack welded five sixteenths nuts to the back side before I tack welded this piece to this big tube so I've used a I was using a MIG welder I mean you could do this with a stick well you can do this with anything but I was using a MIG welder and uh, basically those pocket holes all these holes line up on the back of the motor and you know I had to file and manipulate some of them to get it all to work but basically you can see you know, layout lines on that um, so there's a fair bit of time in, in doing this but this is the backbone of the project everything else is going to be built off of this I think my electronics may even sit inside here uh, they may or may not I may have to build a bigger box but I've been thinking about it so We'll see when we get to the next step. I'll uh, keep you guys posted.